HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have highlights from some of the Martin Luther King Day festivities in town. The Hopkinton Police Department had a couple promotions and welcomed a new officer to the team. And Selectman Chair Ben Palaco made an announcement about his future with the board. But first, HCAM News recently caught up with town manager Norman Kumalu to talk about some of the happenings in town. This year, four longtime town employees retired. Fire Chief Ken Clark, Police Lieutenant Charles Wallace, Town Treasurer Maureen Duanell, and Town Clerk Jerry Holland. I asked Town Manager Norman Kumalu his thoughts on this year's retiring class. Well, this is uh, an excellent group of individuals. Uh, each one of them brought many skills uh, and talents to their positions. I've had the honor uh, and the privilege to work with the four individuals over the last uh, seven years. Um, they all have done great things for the community. Uh, think of Chief Clark. Uh, he single-handedly um, introduced emergency management to the work of the fire department. Uh, and what the public doesn't see is the effort that goes into coordinating the activities of different town entities with the work of outside agencies. Uh, you see that when there are snowstorms, you see that when um, he was dealing with the, with the marathon. Uh, it's one of the largest public gathering events in this state and he did that successfully over many, many years. Uh, Jerry Holland. I think what people need to remember about Jerry Holland is the fact that uh, she managed, in fact, the multiple transitions in the town manager's office. Uh, she worked with different boards of selectmen, different town managers, and my transition into this role would not have been successful, would not have been as smooth as it was, uh, were it not for Jerry's contributions. Uh, Maureen Dunell, the numerous and multiple uh, projects that were approved at town meeting were funded through her office and many a times she always found a way to reduce the cost of those projects uh, to the taxpayers. I know usually credit goes to the project manager who's managing that particular project but what I know here in the office is the work that Maureen did in coming up with the appropriate borrowing formula uh, that decent or reduced the cost of the project tremendously, re resulting in multi-dollar um, savings for the community. Um, Chuck Wallace, what a wonderful gentleman. Um, I actually enjoyed working with Chuck from the viewpoint of he always presented the viewpoint that our work is about building community. By way of example, all the meetings that Chuck attended after hours, uh, were it meetings that he himself was required to attend or his wife was required to attend, Chuck always was by his side. And I think that was a constant reminder uh, to all of us that um, families are important uh, and, and that we should always look for opportunities to strengthen family principles here at Town Hall as well as uh, in the work that we do. Um, again, it's great pleasure and, and privilege for me to work with this team. I then asked what he will miss most about working in the same building as Town Clerk Jerry Holland and Town Treasurer Maureen Duanell. Or oh, a personal issue, 
she always was there to offer her advice and she did it in a very fair, impartial uh, and progressive manner. Uh, Jerry Holland, very kind. Uh, I, 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 I always say Jerry uh, defined the edge in town hall. Um, she had a very humane approach to doing her work and I will miss that. You can find more of the HCAM News interview with the town manager on our website, hcam.tv. We will also have more with Mr. Kumalu on next week's edition of HCAM News. At the end of this past week's Board of Selectmen meeting, Chairman Ben Paleko, who is serving the third year and final year of his second term with the board, made an announcement about his future as a selectman. Uh, take us back to agenda item two here at the public forum. I, just, I have a little thing I'm going to read here. Uh, it's a statement from me as chairman of the board. So, I'm in my sixth year on the board of selectmen, and during my tenure, the accomplishments of this board include protected the town's financial state during the most significant economic crisis since the Great Depression without dramatic impacts on taxes, services, or personnel. Carefully controlled the growth of the town operating budget, providing all residents with continued outstanding service at reasonable cost, resulting in taxing residents cumulatively over $4 million less than possible under our Proposition 2.5 limit. We executed one of the very few budget underrides ever undertaken in the state of Massachusetts, guaranteeing for taxpayers that an additional $1.25 million in annual excess levy saved through our control of spending would not be reversed. We designed and implemented a funding process to begin to address the town's substantial long-term pension and other benefits liabilities and thereby prevent a future fiscal crisis. We gained approval of a new school. We gained approval of a new library. We gained approval of a new P DPW facility. The board took control of marathon number distribution for the benefit of the town, resulting in over $400,000 in funds raised to date for local charitable organizations. We formed and led a multi-town collaboration group that was a key contributor to defeating a proposed Milford Casino. We advanced the revitalization of downtown, which is on its way to being the vibrant, engaging location we all hoped it would be. We purchased several important parcels in town to protect against further development and maintain the rural feel our residents value. We purchased the last two large parcels on Hayden Road to enable future town uses beyond the new school. This board advanced both the town trail network and the expansion of sidewalks identified by residents as key priorities. We developed a brand new town manager into one of the finest professionals in the Commonwealth. This board directed a search process for a new police chief and made the final selection on an individual who's proven to be an outstanding hire. We established a permanent building committee and created a capital asset management plan to ensure the town structures are constructed as efficiently as possible and that all town assets are properly cared for. This board continued to work with Legacy and other large developers in town to accommodate their plans without destroying the town's character. And last but not least, this board oversaw a spectacularly successful 300th anniversary celebration, which as I touched upon, I know because I attended most of the events. So I'm sure there are other significant activities that I forgot simply because there have been so many. I have lived in this town for almost 20 years and I can recall no other board that has accomplished so much in so many areas and with so little fanfare or even positive acknowledgement. This group has been visionary, thoughtful and productive in advancing our town based upon the priorities set by our fellow residents. The work you see done at public meetings is the very small tip of a very large iceberg. We've done all of this relatively quietly, with great discretion and no self-promotion, and as a result, Hopkinton has come to take for granted excellence in local government. With all those achievements and more in 10 years of service to the town, and having spent almost half my life in some form of public service, I have decided to focus my time and energy on my family and other productive activities, and so I will not be running for re-election in May. I'm making this announcement now because I'd like to challenge a new generation in town to step forward and I want to leave plenty of time for those people to make their decision and have a chance to present their vision to the voters. I look forward to competitive election and to new members of our town leadership who will build upon this board's success and can continue to advance the evolution of Hopkinton in an equally positive and successful manner. With that, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Selectman John Mosier is also in the final year of his term, but has not made an announcement about his plans going forward. No matter what your opinion is, you should certainly be thankful to the volunteers who serve your town. Also at the Selectman meeting, the Hopkinton Police Department recently promoted two longtime officers to sergeant 
and also welcomed a new officer to the force. At this past week's selectmen meeting, the board approved and congratulated Hopkinton police officers Aaron O'Neill and Matthew McNeil on their promotions to sergeant. I've been here for 17 years. Um, I grew up in Westboro, which is a tight knit community. Um, my mother was glad that I got hired by the town next to us because I went all over the East Coast looking for a job and I ended up in Hopkinton. Um, working here in Hopkinton has been uh, such a great experience. I was given an opportunity. I work with uh, the finest men and women. Um, those people that know me know my family is my closest thing to them and I consider the Hopkinton police part of my family. Just, uh, I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity that, uh, that, I, that I get. I, I've like the chief said, I've been here for 16 years and as with Officer O'Neill, um, was hired shortly after him and uh, um, we've been essentially worked our careers together and with the senior staff that's, that's in place and, and like he said, the new officers, it's a, it's a great time to, to, uh, to become a sergeant, to help grow the department and to be um, a part of the administration to help, that, help the department grow. The board also welcomed Hopkinton's newest police officer, Matthew Santoro. To say that um, serving others and helping others has long been a passion of mine, um, and I thought that policing would be the best way I could accomplish that. Um, and you know, being here the past few days even, um, I felt so welcomed in this community. You can really tell how special of a place it is. Um, and I want to be a part of keeping that community safe and um, letting the people of Hopkinton know that they are truly cared about by the men and women of this department. Um, and over the past six months, I've learned a lot about policing. Um, and I know I still have a long way to go, but I have full confidence that I'm learning from the, the best men and women there are. Congratulations to now Sergeant Aaron O'Neill and Matt McNeil, and welcome to Hopkinton, Officer Santoro. Coming up next on HCAM News, we have highlights from some of the many Martin Luther King Day happenings around town, and a lot more. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Trojan for the awesome tour of the H Camp Studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend one, to learn a Girl Scout troop. And two, visiting H Camp to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. Welcome back to HCAM News. To kick off the Martin Luther King Day festivities, the Hopkinton Youth Commission hosted the annual Martin Luther King Jr. Song Circle, featuring a number of talented local musicians. This year, the event took place at the beautiful new addition to the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Today for uh, our singers, we had Amanda Maffei, a wonderful, talented singer, um, Barbara Kessler. She sang um, toward the end, and I know she's a uh, professional who's put out several albums. Uh, we also had the group Take Four from Hopkinton Middle School. Um, and we had some teens, Julia Lotfin and her friends from Hopkinton High School as well as the band Fuse, also from Hopkinton High School. And they all did a great job. I have to say, there are a lot of talented musicians in Hopkinton. So um, it, it really was a matter of reaching out to folks, um, and they made some suggestions. So we had a wonderful mix of, of adults and very talented teens.
He's calling us toward greater things. Voice resounding, let freedom ring. I remember the day Mom called us in from play to watch him preach, I have a dream. Remember this man lived his life for justice. Where justice lives, we live free. You can catch the full version of the Martin Luther King Jr. Song Circle airing soon on HCAM. The Hopkinton Youth Commission kept the Martin Luther King Day on, not day off tradition going for the 10th straight year. The tradition brings together scouts, students, and anyone else who wants to volunteer their time to help out a charitable cause or local organization. The effort was started in honor of Martin Luther King Jr., who was historically known for his giving nature. Here is a look at some of the many activities that took place throughout the day. For the 10th year in a row, Martin Luther King Junior Day activities took place at Hopkinton Middle School. The festivities kicked off with a speech from clinical psychologist, Dr. Arthur Sarah McCauley. There's a concept called Helper's High. Maybe some of you have heard about it. It's, it's what happens when you give to other people unselfishly. When your concerns for someone else is above your concern for yourself, in that moment you know that they have more pain than you do and you want to give to them. It's called helper's high. What happens when you have helper's high? You, re you release endorphins. The same thing as runner's high. But what else do you release? Oxytoxin. The bonding, loving hormone. The hormone that makes us calm, makes us healthy. People who have helper's high, who experience helper's high, studies have proven, are 10 times healthier, 10 times healthier than the normal population. Well, the speech basically was to focus on the fact that 48 years ago, we honored Dr. Martin Luther King in a time when our society was very stressed, people were untrusting, and prejudice was high. 48 years later, we're here today, we're facing very similar circumstances. Stress is very high, prejudice is high, race relations are poor. What can we do about it? We can enact in us what Dr. Martin Luther King enacted in his life, which is stand up against prejudice and hatred. The way to do that is to develop empathy and compassion. And when we do that, we elicit certain hormones in our brain, oxytocin and serotonin, which are calming, healthy neurochemicals, make us healthier people. And people who are giving 
have, studies have proven uh, far more successful personally and professionally. And remember, Dr. King is not honored, honored 48 years later because of the fact that he was a star athlete or, or, an, or a, won an Oscar in a movie. He was honored because he stood up against hatred and prejudice. And every one of us can do the same. We have to speak. We have to stand up and ask people and have a voice. Empathy cannot just be a passive capacity. It has to be put in action. All right, and uh, how long have you been uh, doing research about this topic? Well, I wrote a book called The Power of Empathy in 2000, so I've written several books similar, and I have a new book coming out in uh, May called The Stress Solution, which incorporates all of these ideas. After the speech, many activities took place in the Brown Gymnasium to benefit charitable causes or to help those in need. Uh, this is one of the things I love. Um, I love encouraging kids to do things that help them give back, give service, do thing, good things for others. Our speaker today, Dr. Arthur Sarah McCauley, was fabulous. He talked about that and how empathy and doing things for others actually makes you feel better. He talked about the scientific reasons for that. Um, it builds, it creates endorphins, it creates oxytocin or toxin. Um, so it's great in many ways. It helps others and it helps you too. So that's a little about what we're doing today. Um, helping others and it also makes us feel good. We have lots of activities going on in the Brown Gym again, like we usually do. Um, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, community teen. Um, there is a church here doing some projects. So we love this because it, it's something the kids can do as an activity to make it a day on and not a day off. Some of the volunteers talked to HCAM News about the activities that took place throughout the day. We obtained the fabric. Uh, yards of fabric and then we cut them down into long narrow strips or at least scarf length strips and then the ends are, are cut and knotted to make the tassels on the very end and ultimately they turn out to look something like this and they of course um, Patriots right now are going to the AFC championship on Sunday so Patriots go Pats but we also have other themed uh, scarves such as soccer, we have uh, Red Sox scarves and others that will be sold this week at the middle school for five dollars each and again the profits will be benefiting two local organizations. You can find tons more from the Martin Luther King Day festivities on our website hcam.tv. We will also have more on next week's edition of HCAM News. It is a busy month of programming on the HCAM channels. Here is Courtney with our HCAM Insider to tell you what to expect. Hello everyone and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, January 23rd at 3 p.m., it's Ice Hockey versus Ashland. On Monday, January 25th at 6.30 p.m., the girls basketball team takes on Millis, live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, January 26th at 6.30 p.m., Dr. Arthur Ciara McCauley gives an inspirational speech on empathy. On Wednesday, January 27th at 7 p.m., it's time for audience members to shine on a new Wake Up and Smell the Poetry as they share original and inspirational poetry and songs. Now I'm driving on the edge of reason In a winter so unkind but they on this new year's ride. On Friday, January 29th at 6.30 p.m., the boys' basketball team goes up against Holliston, live on HCAM TV. On Sunday, January 31st at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from January 25th will air. Of course, this is just the tip of the HCAM iceberg. If you want to know about all of the other shows we produce and when they will air, visit hcam.tv slash newsupdates to sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. You can also subscribe to our daily news updates to stay connected with everything Hopkinton. As always, thanks for watching. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who has been making submissions, because with your help, we will continue to cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. 
We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and thanks for tuning in. Smile has gone.